Hi. In this video, you will learn how to show, how to create and show a pop-up, also known as a modal window or a dialog box in the ZUI. It's very easy and you only need to write a bit of script that is easy to, to write and to read. Let's get started. All right. So I'm going to start by showing you the free examples that come with uh, the ZUI. The current version is uh, the, the one that I'm using is 431. Uh, this is the pop-ups database. All right. And I'm going to start with the examples just so you know what we will be building. I will, we will be creating the most complex one so you can see all the bells and whistles. All right. So the first example, example 22, it's a simple pop-up with a title and a text. And basically these three buttons will show the same pop-up, but with different settings. So this is one pop-up. If I click anywhere or the escape key, it will disappear. Let's press escape. The second one, again, the same pop-up, but a different value. And the third one, it's very easy to customize. All right. So this is a simple, uh, basically a notification message, something like that. Um, let's go for the next example. So the next example is again, a pop-up that has one button. So the difference between the other one is that uh, if I press escape or if I click anywhere, it, it won't work. It really uh, prompts the user to select uh, a button. If it, if he or she doesn't click the button, well, this won't work. One more thing that this pop-up has, you've noticed that my button has been automatically selected. This pop-up has been uh, made, uh, ha has been configured to work with controllers. So if I use the arrow keys, let's say, let's see pop-up free. I'm going to press enter right now. As you can see, a pop-up appears. This button hasn't been really designed that well, but it's selected. So if I press enter again, or if I have the controller, it will work and it will reselect back the previously selected button, right? So basically now, if this is the, the mouse, I'm just using the keyboard or a, I can also connect the controller and show you the same thing. All right. The third example is another pop-up. Uh, again, it's animated. You can create any animation you can think of. Let's save. Let's enter play mode. Ignore that. And here, let's click it. We have OK and cancel. And you can also conf confirm the events. Let me say don't maximize. Let's clear this. So I'm going to show pop up one and cancel. And you can see we press cancel. Pop, pop up two, a question, choose something. Yes. I'm going to click it again. No. And pop up three. Like I said, I'm going to press enter because I think buy is selected. I don't know. Can you see that I'm switching between the buttons? Uh, let's maximize. Right. So check it out. Let's say buy. Cancel. Yeah. So buy cancel and let's go to maximize and confirm. All right. So pop up free buy. So I know what button was pressed and cancel. Basically we're, we're sending the events. We're setting the events for the button. All right. So that's pretty much it. Uh, this is your basic uh, pop up or modeling window. What you should know about this particular component is, is that its purpose is to block the UI. What I mean by that, for example, you may be in the settings menu and your uh, device loses internet connection. Well, you might want to show a pop-up to your user and say internet connection lost. So they, they can appear anytime, anywhere. Or maybe you're in a game and you have achievements, right? You may want to show them as pop-ups. Or maybe uh, you want to, again, you're in a game and you want to say, buy more lives. Again, you can show a pop-up and uh, the user chooses what to do next. All right. So let's, uh, let's create an empty, uh, an empty scene because I would like to create a pop-up from scratch. 
I'm going to show you the overlay, the animations, how they all connect and how to call it from code. It's not complicated. And yeah, let's get started. So I have a new scene. This is a simple main camera. I'm going to create a canvas. And I'm going to set it to screen space camera as the render mode. And let's also set a canvas scaler 800 by 600 with 8.5. I'm just using this resolution so it's bigger on the screen so you can see it better. And let's select the event system and add the new input system. And let's add a background to my uh, canvas just so we can see it better. So 16, 16, 16. I would like it to be black. Almost black, actually. All right. This will be my background. Actually, I would like to set an image from my background, something like that just so we can uh, yeah something like that just so we can see what is happening all right so this is my background yeah it's all fine and then the preserve aspect no leave it like that all right so i'm gonna create an empty game object and this will be my pop-up i'm gonna say my pop-up right and i'm gonna add to i'm gonna make it as big as the screen and I'm going to add to it a UI pop-up uh, script, all right? A UI pop-up is basically a UI container because it has height, uh, show and height. That's it. So it derives from the UI comp uh, container component, all right? And what do we have here? Well, we, we can reference an overlay. This, this overlay is basically a, something that covers the entire screen and blocks your clicks. It's very important. Usually you darken the, the, the screen or you make it lighter. You have a container and this is the body, the one that moves, right? You have a choice of where to parent it and we'll talk about this later. Override sorting, usually you should leave it enabled. What this will do, it will change the sorting to almost the highest level. The highest is actually for reserved for tooltips and just under it, we have our pop-up in the sorting order. It can block the back button and it should do that because uh, if you press escape or the Android back button, uh, the pop-up should block it. So you, you make sure that your user is, uh, oh, what did I click? You make sure that the user can uh, cannot affect your UI. And now you have several options to close it. It can also auto hide and some options to select uh, the pop-up button, what you've seen before. So if you... If you're using a controller, you might want to have uh, this clear show and say what button should be selected. All right. So these are the settings. Now we have references, labels, images, and buttons, whatever th fields we want to change. We have some callbacks when it's shown. So we have all the, the things for, from the container and we can also add progressors for fancy schmancy stuff. All right. So like I said, I created an a, a simple uh, rect transform and added a UI pop-up to it. Now I want to create the overlay. What is the overlay? Well, it's an image actually. It can be anything, but you usually set an image. I'm gonna not name it overlay. You can even name it cat. It's the same thing, but yeah, let's say overlay. And let's make it as big as our pop-up. And I'm gonna say, let's make it dark. And let's add a transparency to it. Uh, 128. Yeah, this will be enough. And I'm going to connect it here. And now I need a body. So I'm going to create a uh, container. This will be my container. All right. And yeah, let's add a background to it so we can actually see it. Let's give it some visual things so this will be my pop-up and now i'm going to show you some layouting stuff inside unity these are basic things um i don't know how many of you know how to use them let's see background but i will try to explain how they work so basically how am i building my pop-up i have a horizontal layout group and i want to stack it right so i'll say title message buttons right and maybe the buttons will be horizontally stacked. So 
I'm going to add here a vertical layout group. All right. I'm going to say child alignment middle center. I'm not going to use child force expand width or height, but I'm going to say child control size. And I'm going to add a content size fitter. Basically, I want the container to uh, resize itself, not scale, but resize itself depending on the size of its contents. So basically, the text and the things that I add inside of it should uh, resize the, the size of my pop up, right? So right now you'll notice that my container has the width and the height of 100, right? The moment I'm going to set this to preferred size, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go to zero and zero because I do not have anything inside my container. The background doesn't have a size right now. All right, so it's zero and zero. Now, my background should not be uh, taken into account by the layout in system. So I want to take it out. So I'm going to add a layout element and I'm going to say ignore layout. All right. And instead of uh, this anchor, I'm going to use this setup for the anchor. So it, it grows uh, depending on the size of the container. And now let's add some body to my container. So I'm going to add a text, text mesh pro. I'm going to say this will be my title. All right. Let's also see the text. Let's say uh, 20, 20, 20. Bold. Uh, 24, something like that. And this will be my title. Let's say pop up title. All right. And now we also need to add another component here called content size fitter. So basically I want this to resize uh, to the preferred size, All right? And now I'm going to add one more. Remember they are added like that because they're inside a vertical layout group. And this would be my message, All right? And I'm going to say pop up message. Let's remove the bold and let's say 18. All right. Perfect. And now I want to limit the size of my container. So I'm going to say layout element. Actually, no, let's not just add that. All right. So I have my uh, title, my message, and now I want my button. So I'm going to add a flex button. All right. Inside of here. And I'm going to say here button icon. And here button label. Here I'm going to say button. And in the button label, I'm going to say pop up button. There you go. All right. This is a big, uh, a bit big for this. So let's make this 16. Let's make this 24. Let's make it a bit smaller. All right. And let's set a color for this. Let's say this color. Maybe yeah, something like that. Yeah, looks, looks good. All right. Now we need to add some spacing. All right. So I'm going to come to my container and I'm going to say left padding 16, right 16, top 16, it's a bit much, let's say 8, and bottom 8, something like that, right? And spacing between elements, let's say 8. Now, I'd like to add one more space between my pop-up button and my pop-up message. And now I need to add a empty game object right here between message and button so that the size doubles. So I'm just going to add it here. And I'm going to create this space. And if I want to control the size, so basically what I've done, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, let me hide this. What I've done, I've added this game object here. So if I, if I hide it, as you can see, they, they, they come together. All right, I'll say layout element, preferred height, I'm going to say 16, 
and this is the size of my uh, my space basically yeah so i can adjust uh, the spacing between these these are just some tips and tricks and yeah you know let's say eight all right let's enable our background again all right so this is our simple one button pop-up right now i have all of these things i don't think the colors are quite right for the icon so let's use these i think this is more appropriate and for the title and message let's use this color yeah perfect and let's just make this rounded a bit i'm just using a, a circle one yeah this is good all right so now i have my nicely created pop-up I don't have any animations and I also don't have everything referenced. So I, I'm going to select it and I'm going to start referencing things. So the overlay is this overlay. I need to have a reference to it because one of the options for the pop-up is to hide, to, to hide the pop-up when you click the overlay. All right. So that's why we need the reference here. The same thing is for the container. If I want to be able to click the container, so anywhere in the container, and hide it, I need to reference it here so I can use this option, right? Now, in order to change things when you show the pop-up, you need to have reference to, references to these labels, images, and the, the buttons, all right? So I'm going to get them in order. I'm going to drag and drop the title. Now I'm going to drag and drop the message. Now I'm going to drag and drop the button label, all right? So I can change the pop-up title. I can change the pop-up message and I can change the label on the pop-up button, right? Now, I would also like to change this icon, right? So I'm going to say button icon and this is an image. And I also want to set something uh, functionality to this particular button, all right? So I'm going to say button and I'm going to put it here. And now I have my uh, pop-up properly set up. I'm even going to leave it, let, let it hide when the back button is, uh, is hit, right? Okay, now I need to add some animations. Now, usually my overlay, uh, so right now if you show this pop-up, it will appear instantly and disappear instantly. And I think I'm going to show it like that, just for now. Now, in order to show a pop-up, you need to add it to the database. So we need to create a prefab out of what we've just created, right? So here in the demo folder, I'm going to drag and drop this. So I just created a prefab. I'm going to delete it from here. And now I need a way to add it to the pop-ups database. I can access the pop-ups pop database from the dashboard. Okay. And here I have, I have the, the, the pop-ups that will come with the UI from the examples, right? And I'm going to create a UI pop-up link. Basically, this asset connects your uh, prefab to the database. So I'm going to create Doozy links UI pop-up link. And I'm simply going to drag and drop this prefab right here. I'm going to validate it. And I'm going to go to the database and there you go, my pop-up and it's been added to the database. And now I can access it, all right? For this, usually when you show a pop-up, you show it from code. For whatever reason, something happens and you want to show it. But for this example, I'm going to use a button to show it, so to, to trigger um, its apparition, right? It's showing. So I'm going to go to the UI, actually UI menu, components, let's create a simple button and yeah, let's put it down and let's say 56, there you go. All right. So I would like this button when let's enter play mode. When I click it, I want to show my, uh, my pop-up. All right. So now we need to create a script because like I said, pop-ups are shown in script. All right. So let's create a script, let's say demo pop-up, actually pop-up demo, pop-up demo, right, let's 
see it let me see the zoom level can you see it yeah it's okay perfect let's clean this up let's add a namespace otherwise i will go insane all right let's remove this garbage all right perfect so in order to be able to use a pop-up i need to know its name so i'm gonna say a pop-up name so i'm gonna say public string pop-up name in this case we had my pop-up my pop-up yeah all right another thing that we are setting here we're setting a title we're setting a message and we're setting a uh, button label right so i'm gonna say public string pop-up uh, title uh, i need a pop-up message all right and now i need a pop-up button text and this will be um, okay right so what else do we have well if you remember we have a heart for our uh, button so we also have a public sprite pop-up uh, pop-up button icon all right and this will be null of course we need to reference it Whew. and finally we have a unity event um public unity event because i want to be able to add it from um, our inspector and i'll say on pop-up button clicked equals new come on write everything unity event perfect and let's add some spacing here so this will be header pop-up set pop-up fields yeah I'm gonna see just pop up and then I'm gonna say header button. Yeah, there you go. Okay, uh, so now we know what we want to uh, set to our pop up fields. Now we need a method to show the pop up. So public void. Let's see, do you know? Show pop up. This is wrong. All right, GitHub Copilot. Okay, so. I need to get the pop-up var pop-up equals UI pop-up get. So now we're getting the pop-up from the database. We're getting uh, the the instance, right? We're creating an inst we're cloning our uh, prefab, and I'm gonna say pop-up name, right? Now it can happen that the pop-up will be null. So basically. You have a typo or something so in order to avoid a new reference i'm going to say if pop-up is no i'm just gonna uh, return right and let's also add some comments here so get the pop-up not from the manager from the database all right uh, if the pop-up is not in a database return and now we need to set up our uh, fields so i'm gonna say pop-up set texts and we need to set them in the order that we reference them so let me show you the order let's bring it back here so the order is as follows title message button label right so i'm gonna say pop-up title pop-up message she pop-up button uh button text there you go all right so now we've set the text next i would like to set the image let's see so i want to set the button icon basically this icon i want to change it to whatever i want right so it already knows perfect set sprites and finally I want to set events and I want to say on button clicked. So basically uh, the unit event, what, what happens when the button is clicked, right? And after I've set the text, I set the sprites, I've set the events, all it's left to do is to show the pop-up. So that show. 
and let's also add a comment here let's put them like that that's all the code <laughs> so basically this is it this is everything you need to write it's easy to write easy to read what else do you want of course i can also do something like that so uh another way of doing this is with an old check and that's pretty much it and i can ignore these so this is even simpler but i want you to understand how uh, this works basically so i'm just gonna leave it like that right and undo yeah perfect okay so now let's uh, attach this script to our button and let's show the pop-up right and then we're gonna uh, animate it just so you can see how uh, this works with these work it will appear instantly it will disappear instantly right now because we have no animations uh did unity load perfect okay let's delete this and on my simple button i will drag and drop the script let's also select a uh, icon let's say uh, this i'm gonna say instead of okay download all right and i'm gonna also inject uh do i want to inject a clicked no i'm gonna leave it like that um okay so let's say Let's say we have another method, public void debug test string message debug debug.log message. Okay. I will be using this to, to set my event, right? All right. So when this button is when this uh, the the pop-ups button is clicked, I'm gonna run this uh, debug text text and say uh, download started, right? Just so we can see in the console that it works. And now in order for this button to trigger the show pop-up method, I'm gonna say behaviors pointer click add behavior. Usually wouldn't be doing this because pop-ups aren't connected to buttons or should not be connected to buttons show pop-up remember to have here runtime only at least or editor and runtime but not off all right and that's that's pretty much it so now when we will enter play mode uh, you will see that a new pop-ups canvas uh, will appear and we will have some issues with uh, the scaling and i will show you why and how to fix it all right, so there you go. And it appears instantly and it can also disappear. Of course, here we have download started. So click, I'm gonna click it and it works. Now we have a problem with the canvas. By default, uh, the UI pop-up will look for the UI tag, UI pop-up canvas. If it does not find one, it creates its own canvas and because our canvas has a canvas scaler and the default canvas doesn't have one or it's set to constant pixel size you will get this issue you can fix it in two ways one and this is the most the most simple thing is just to tag your canvas so basically i'm gonna say use this canvas as my pop-ups canvas as well because they will be automatically automatically sorted right so you will notice that even though my pop-up has a canvas of its own and it's set to this pixel perfect and doesn't have override sorting we have an option here called override sorting order this will automatically make the pop-up the high almost the highest thing in your hierarchy uh, one, one thing it's higher than it is the the tooltip but that isn't the issue here all right so i'm gonna say ui tag so this is one way of handling it. UI pop-up, canvas. All right. So now the pop-up will be instantiated under this canvas because this will be considered the UI pop-ups canvas. I'm gonna select the prefab and you can see parent mode pop-ups canvas. What is the pop-up canvas? Well, the canvas that contains that tag. So let's enter play mode. 
And now you will see that it will appear right here. Check it out. And it's on top of everything because we have override sorting because this is enabled, right? Now, um, let's see how we can close this pop-up. So this pop-up will disappear by clicking any button. So if I'm gonna come here and click download, it's gonna disappear. And of course it will work. Uh, it also disappears if you click the back button. So basically the escape key. If I click the overlay, so this is the overlay, the dark stuff, in this uh, particular instance, or the container. So basically anywhere here. Now, I'm changing the prefab settings, by the way. So whenever I instantiate a new clone of this prefab, it will take the new settings. So if I'm going to disable everything and I'm going to say any button, any reference button. So basically right now, this pop-up can be hidden only if we could click this button. Why would you want to do that? Well, if you want to your, your user to, to click the button, so basically an acknowledgement that uh, he understands what message you've shown uh, showed him, well, you, you would want to do that. So now when I show the, the, the pop-up, I cannot click anywhere. If I click escape, it doesn't work. And only if I click this button will the pop-up disappear. Right. Another setting is for the back button. Right. So I'm going to show it right now. And even though I, I click anywhere on the overlay, uh, the overlay also blocks this, right? Or on the pop up or even this uh, button. Right. So I'm clicking it like a madman. Well, it will not, uh, it will not work. I need to press the escape key or the back button. Right or let's say overlay. Again, let's show it. Now, if I click this or this, it will not disappear. But if I click anywhere around here, it will disappear. And now for the container, remember we have references to it and this is why we need them. So we can capture these clicks. Let's show the button. And now if I click anywhere here, it doesn't work. If I click the download button, it doesn't work. It doesn't hide. That's what I mean, right? And now if I click the container, so anywhere here, it will disappear. So these are these uh, particular settings. Usually you would say any button if it has a button, or maybe if you want to click whatever, just make it like that on the back button and you're done. All right. So another way of handling the canvas, let's say you want to have a dedicated canvas, right? I'm going to remove this component and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to create my own canvas. I'm going to say to screen space overlay, for example. So let's create a canvas and I'll say my special canvas, whatever your special. The idea here is to copy. So basically if, if your UI uses these canvas scalar settings, you need to have the same settings here. Otherwise, on your canvas, on your uh, pop-ups canvas. And let's mark this as my pop-ups canvas. I'm going to say custom UI pop-up canvas. And now I will enter play mode. You will see that the pop-up will be spawned, will be um, instantiated under this game object but you will have an issue with the size. Check it out, All right? So basically it's the, 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 the scale factor that uh, is the issue. You need to set it uh, with a proper, um, maybe you can have it like that. So yeah, you really don't want to have a scale issues, right? And you can see that it's under here. So download, yeah, this is, so to fix this, so you, you want to have your own canvas and you want to, to, to have a proper scaling. So I'm going to copy the canvas scalar settings from here. I'm going to paste component values here and that's it. Now, the, the, all the UI pop-ups will use this canvas and you can set it to don't destroy uh, on load when the scene changes, if you want to do that. And you will have proper scaling. Of course, if you change the scaling for your canvas, you also need to change it here. So yeah, 
I wouldn't go with this option, but it is available to you. What I would do is get my canvas, uh, attach my uh, tag here, and just remove this, and there you go. Now, you don't have uh, scaling issues because uh, the UI, the, the, the pop-up will scale with the settings set on your canvas. Whew. All right, so we handled creation, we handled events. Let's also handle animation and we should be done. Actually, no, and then I'm, I'm gonna show you a queue system. When you show multiple pop-ups at once, you do not want to show them all at once. You want to have them one after the other. For example, let's say you have achievements in your game or uh, in your app or whatever. Uh, if, it, if uh, your user earns five achievements, you cannot show them stacked one over the other. So the best thing to do here is to um, show one off after the other, all right? And we also have a simple queue system. You can have multiple queues. I'm gonna show you right now. All right, so let's uh, let's animate this uh, this crazy thing, all right? So first of all, I would like to have my uh, overlay fade in and fade out because it's nicer that way, all right? So the UI pop-up, is a UI container. That means that any components that take a UI container as a controller will be available for the UI pop-up. So basically all the animators and sounds and whatever. And let me show you. I'm gonna say UI container and I can use any of these. And I'm gonna say UI container UI animator because I know I want to animate uh, the fade value. Let's also reset this. It already knows the controller. It's my pop-up. And right now it says to hide and show. It's a move animation. I do not want that. I want to um, fade in and fade out, right? So I'm gonna disable the move and I'm gonna say fade from custom value zero, right? To start value in point three. And when I hide it again, I wanna fade from start value to custom value zero. And now the animation is something like that. Let's also make this uh, 204, something like that, so it's even darker. We're basically animating the alpha value here, in case you were wondering. Okay, so now I have my uh, animation, right? So let's apply all. Let's delete our prefab, enter play mode, and now you will see that my background, uh, my overlay actually animates. And you can see the animation. Now I want my, uh, my container to have a, its own animation, right? How can I do that? It's the same thing actually. So let's bring it here. And now let's animate our container. I'm gonna use the UI container UI animator. And right now, I'm going to reset this. And I'm going to say, move from the bottom of the screen very fast, out expo. So show, this is very fast. And I also want to scale. And I want to scale from zero. And I'm going to say out back. So this is my show animation. Yeah. And now for my hide, again, I want to hide down so hide now i want it to, to to start slow and go go fast there you go and the scale again i want to scale to zero in an in back so grow a bit and then go small hide so now we have this animation it's nice whatever and let's just apply all Let's delete this and let's enter play mode and we have our animation. If I want to change my message, um, of course you do this from code. I'm going to repeat that and I'll say something special. Uh, oh, not the pop-up name, this something special as the title. This is a special message for just for you, right? Instead of download, I'm gonna say uh, 
Thank you. And let's also change the icon with a, um, a bell icon, for example, right? So now, this is how you create your fancy schmancy pop-up. Now, you remember I said that you may, uh, you, you may show different uh, pop-ups. For example, if I wouldn't use a, an overlay, let me show you now some fringe use cases. For whatever reason, you are not using an overlay. Let's save this, uh, let's save this pop-up like this, right? You, so you're not using an, an, uh, an overlay. Did I save it? Yeah. Let's delete this. So let's enter play mode. And now you've shown the pop-up, right? But I'm gonna show it again, and again, and again, and again. And you can see, let's say the user earned several achievements. Well, this doesn't look well because it's, yeah, it's really, it's really not nice. So how can you handle this issue? Well, you use a queue. Basically you can say show pop-up, but add it to a queue. And if there are other pop-ups in front of it, wait until they are shown. And after that, it will show this one. So basically hiding one pop-up triggers the showing of the next one. And how can you do that? It's one small change in code. That's it. Instead of show, so you're gonna say show from Q. That's it. <laughs> that's, that's it. And let's enter play mode. And now I'm going to click five times on the, on the button. So basically I've earned five achievements. I don't know for what, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to say one, two, three, four, five. Notice that the pop-ups are already available, but you cannot see them. So I'm going to hide the first one. The second one appears. And again, and again, and again. So this is the, the pop-up uh, system. You can also use different, so basically if you want to show different pop-ups on different streams, you can also do that. Uh, by the way, show ignores streams, so it ignores uh, Jesus streams, cues, cues. So I can see here achievement, right? So basically I'm creating uh, a queue called achievements because I also have UI pop-up, clear queue. And here I can say achievements. So let's say you, the user skips seeing all the uh, achievement, uh, achievements, all, all the, all the pop-ups in the achievements queue. Well, you can clear the queue if you want to do that. Just so you, you know, and again, this is, this is going to be the same stuff. There you go. Three, one, two, three. There you go. Whew. one more setting and we're done. So another functionality that we added is the option to add your pop-up inside a target. So right now we have parent mode pop-ups canvases, and this is 99% of the cases, but you may want to show the pop-up on one side of your screen. Maybe it's connected to something in particular. You do not want to block the entire UI. So if you want to do that, you can also do that. And you say UI tag, right? And here you can target a uh, UI tag. Let's also re-enable our overlay. And I'm going to, I'm going to create a new, I'm going to say demo. I'm going to say target. Uh, of course, I can also create some tags. Uh, I'm going to create the tags database and use that, but I'm just going to uh, use custom values for this. And let's save our pop-up, apply all. And let's create a simple image just so we can see where this zone is. Uh, and I'm gonna say, let's add a transparency. Can you see it? Yes. So let's say I want my pop-up to appear some, somewhere here, right? So all I have to do is say UI tag, set the same category demo and say target, right? And enter play mode. And now 
when we will show the pop-up, it will be uh, not spawn instantiated under this image. And there you go. Now we have our pop-up here. All right. So basically, if you want to show the achievements here, you can also do that. And it won't affect your other things uh, in your game. Of course, I can hide the image. And now just it will it will simply appear here. And if you do not want to use the, the overlay, uh, I'm going to disable it. Come back. And this will appear like that. All right. So that's pretty much it for the UI pop-ups. Model window dialog box. Uh, I know this was a long video, but I don't know how else I could explain it in such detail. So you can actually uh, use it to its full potential. All right. So that's pretty much it for this uh, video. Of course, you can also set the tag from uh, code. Maybe I can also show you that. For example, um, let's let's say our prefab is set to spawn by default on the pop-ups canvas, right? So now I'm spawning it uh, under the canvas right here. But what I can do right here, say set uh, parent, and I can set a parent, or I can say uh, set set parent UI tag get first tag. I'm gonna say demo, and then I'm gonna say target. Uh, this is also a string. And then I'm going to say get component rect transform. So I can also set the parent like that. Right. So I'm overriding uh, the uh, pop up settings. And let's come here. And you will see that it spawned again here. Right. So even though the prefab is set to pop up canvas, I can say it OK from code, spawn it there or spawn it there, something like that. And this is how uh, this works. All right. Thank you very much for <laughs> watching this entire video, if you're still here. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next uh, tutorial. Bye bye.